Greetings to all my tech heads out there in the Kev Techify Nation. And if you're new here, welcome. In this episode, we're going to look at implementing ACLs. In this episode, we'll be discussing ACL configuration guidelines, where to place ACLs, and finally, configuring IPv4 access control lists. This episode is part of my series on network security. I'm Kevin here at Kev Techify. Let's get this adventure started. An ACL is made up of one or more access control entry, typically referred to as ACEs or statements. When configuring and applying an ACL, there are a couple guidelines that you need to be aware of. Create ACLs globally and then apply it. So that's the first thing you need to do. Next thing here is ensure that the last statement is an implicit deny any or deny IP any any. It's implicitly denied. So you won't see it, but it is there. It will deny all traffic. So one of the statements before that has to permit traffic to go through there. Otherwise, no traffic will ever make it through that. Here, remember that the statement order is important because ACLs are processed top down. It goes through the first access control entry. If it matches it, it then does what that access control list is supposed to do, how you've got it applied in out traffic permit deny. If it doesn't max that first control, or sorry, that first ACE, that access control entry, it goes to the next ACE. Does it match? Yes or no. If it matches, we'll do what the list is supposed to do. If not, we'll go down to the third one and the fourth one, and we'll go through that. Now, if every statement is matched, that ACL is exited. Ensure that the most specific statements are at the top of the list. Put your, like when you're looking at doing something with a host, matching all 32 bits, put that. Then if you're looking at matching 30 bits, put that, put those statements. And then if you're matching 24 bits, it comes after that. So the most specific ones where you're matching the most bits using that wildcard mask go at the top. Remember that only one access control list is allowed per interface, per protocol, per direction. Once again, per interface, per protocol, per direction. Or protocol here is TCP, UDP, ICMP. Those are our protocols. Remember that new statements for an existing ACL are added at the bottom of that access control list by default. You added a new access control entry, it goes to the bottom of that list. Also, remember that router generated packets are not filtered by ACLs. So if that router generates some traffic, think about like a routing update or a routing protocol, it generates that traffic, it is not affected by outbound filters. So that router generated traffic is not filtered. Place standard ACLs as close to the destination as possible. When you have your network, a standard ACL, place it as close to the destination as possible. Then, with an extended ACL, place it as close to the source as possible. After you create an ACL, you can apply it in a couple different ways. Here are two examples. One we're applying it to the interface. The other, we're applying it to a line. Line con zero, line VTYs. You can apply it to your interfaces or your line connections. Here we have a named ACL and it's being applied to outbound traffic from R1. This is the configuration we use to do that. Once again, we are on R1 right here. So we're going to create our list here. So IP access list, we're using a standard access list and we're naming it. We named it no access. We followed the naming convention of all capital letters in it. So once we're in there, we can see that we are working with a standard or we're configuring a standard named access control list. We go ahead, we enter in our ACEs, our access control entries. So we're going to deny host 192.168.11.10. We're going to go ahead and deny that. 
then our next control and control entry is we're going to allow all other traffic to go through there. So first one is we're going to deny any traffic from host 192.168.11.10. If it didn't match that first access control list, basically the IP address is 192.168.11.10, we're going to permit all our traffic through there. We, these are the only two entries, so we go ahead and type exit. Now that we created it, we have to apply it to the interface. We go into our interface G00, that's what we're looking at right here. And we're going to say IP access group, because we're going to apply that access list here. We're specifying our name here. That's the name we created up there. And we're going to outbound traffic. So any traffic coming out of this router is going into the filter. Once again, remember the big side, all traffic is going in this filter. Only a little traffic is making it through that filter or less traffic is making it through there. Overall, what's happening here is PC2. That is our 192.168.11.10. That's our address here. We're going to deny any traffic that comes from here up to this router and then that goes out of this interface. We're going to deny that traffic from going through there so it won't reach the rest of the network. But PC2, PC2, it can send traffic here and then have it go out the serial and that works just fine. That's why thinking about the inbound versus outbound traffic. Now you could have applied that, that um, access control list here, but it would have blocked all traffic coming into the router and PC2 would have never been able to go across the serial connection. Whether this is probably, I would say your internet connection. If you did it to all inbound traffic coming on G01, PC2 would not be able to browse the internet, connect across the internet. We just want to stop them from getting onto the 192.168.10 network. In this example, we have our two named access, or sorry, our two named extended ACLs. We have our surfing ACL right here, and we have our browsing ACL right there. The surfing ACL is applied to all inbound traffic and browsing ACL is applied to all outbound traffic down here on R1. So on R1 at G00, we, what we're going to do is, so we go into the interface G00, we're going to apply our surfing one to all inbound traffic. Any traffic from this land here inbound, so this is our surfing filter here, will go through our surfing. So we're permitting web traffic, we're permitting secure web traffic to go through. Then for our IP access browsing, we are applying it to outbound traffic. So any traffic coming out here, and so this was browsing again, we're applying it and we have the extended. So we're waiting, we're permitting traffic that we want coming back through our web responses to come back through that's what we're allowing to come through and we're going to deny everything else because once again we have that implicit deny here we have that implicit deny at the end doesn't show up but it does exist if you like this episode on implementing access controllers and you get value out of it and depending upon the platform you're using please click that like button give a five star rating leave a comment doing this supports the channel which in turn helps me bring you more great content click that notification bell to turn on notifications to be alerted every time i release a new episode and there are quite a few new episodes headed your way you can also visit my website at kevtechify.com for all of my details and how to get these episodes in video and podcast form. In this example, we're going to apply an access control list to our VTY line. First thing we do is we create a standard ACL and we're calling it VTY access. Notice we did follow the standard naming convention of all capital letters. We're going to permit any traffic from the 192.168.1, or sorry, .10.10 .10 computer. This is probably your administrator. 
So you want the administrator to have access, but all other devices you are going to deny. So we, we explicitly put a deny any in there. Even though we have the implicit one, we put that explicit one in there. Then we come down here, we go into our line VT zero to four, you can do zero to 15 also. Here we go ahead and we apply that. And to do it on a VTY line, it's access class. We give it the name of our access list right there and we apply it to all traffic. So any traffic coming in here is filtered using our VTY access list. The administrator can get through there, nobody else can. Go ahead, we can type in show access list here and it'll list out our access list, our standard IP access list named VTY access. We're permitting the IP address here. We're also going to log it. We've had six matches. The logging here, once again, is optional, but every time it matches there, it's going to go ahead and log that information. Because this is applied to your VTY lines, you want to know who is accessing it. Every access control list should be placed where it's most effective. Here we have a diagram, and this illustrates where standard and extended ACL should be located in a corporate network. What we're going to assume here is the objective is to prevent traffic that originates on the 192.168.10 network. And so that's over here. So traffic that starts here, we want to deny it from reaching, we want to prevent it from reaching this network over here, the 192.168.30 network. Placement of that access control list, and then that influences your decision on the type of access control list you're going to use. It depends on a variety of factors. Right here, we have three factors. First one that we have is extent of organizational control. What we're talking about here is that placement of the access control list depends whether or not the organization has control of both the source and destination networks. If you control both and source destination, that will help you determine where your access control list goes. Now, if you, if you don't control one of those, you may have to put your access control list in different places. The next one here is bandwidth of networks. Now, it may be desirable to filter unwanted traffic at the source to prevent that transmission of traffic across bandwidth that may not need all that extra traffic going across it. And the third factor here is ease of configuration. It may be easier to implement your access control list at the destination, but traffic will use the entire bandwidth of your network. An extended ACL could be used on each router where the traffic originated. So you could put an, an extended ACL on each router where that traffic is coming from. This would save on bandwidth by filtering the traffic, but it would require creating multiple extended ACLs on different devices. Standard ACLs should be placed or located as close to the destination as possible. And so standard ACL be placed as close to the destination as possible. In this example, we want to prevent traffic originating at the 192.168.10 network. That's down here on the bottom left. We want to prevent it from reaching our 192.168.30 network and we wanna place it as close to the destination as possible, which means we don't wanna place it anywhere close to R1 or R2. What we wanna do is place it over here on R3. Now we could place it in two spots. We could place it on inbound traffic coming in on S0111, and we can place it on outbound traffic going on gig 000. If we put it up here, filtering traffic from 192.168.0 slash 24, it's going to stop all traffic coming in here. It's going to stop it all here. And if there was legitimate traffic that had to get down to the 192.168.30 network, 
it wouldn't make it because it was filtered before it got into the device. The best place to put it, once again, is as close to the destination as possible. So what we wanna do is we want to put it filtering outbound traffic here on R3. Legitimate traffic will make it through to the 192.168.31 network, but it's going to stop it from coming in here. So standard ACLs, as close to the destination as possible. Because once again, standard ACLs only look at the source address. Extended ACL should be located as close to the source as possible. This prevents unwanted traffic from being sent across multiple networks, only to be denied when it reaches its final destination. What you need to think about here is the organization can only place ACLs on devices they can control. So if you can control that, or if you control that device, you can place an ACL there. If you don't control that, you can't put that ACL there. The extended ACL placement must be determined in the context where the organization can put this. In this example here, we have two companies. We have company A, we have company B, separate companies. They don't share an IT infrastructure, so they are completely separate. What we want to have happen here is company A wants to block FTP and Telnet. So we company A right here. So this is company A wants to block FTP from part of their network. And so we're only going to block it from the 192.168.11 network here. And we want to block that FTP and Telnet traffic going to company B's 192.168.30. So we don't want this traffic to go there. So we don't want this to happen. What we, what we have to do is we have to use the extended because we can filter on not only source. Remember, the standard ACL filters only on source. That, or so, sorry, source addresses. Extended can filter on source and destination and protocol. If we look at the requirements, once again, we want to block FTP and Telnet from our network going to their network. So source, destination, and protocol, we can go ahead and specify that with our extended ACL. We want to place that as close to the source as possible. Company A controls R1. And you can put that extended ACL either going outbound on serial 010 or inbound on G001. If we put it on outbound traffic here on serial 0, or yeah, serial 010, depending upon how you set up your ACEs in that extended ACL, it may block legitimate traffic from coming here, especially if it comes from here. And once again, depending upon how you have your access control entry set up, it may block legitimate traffic coming from this network going all the way over to these networks. Place that access control list, that extended ACL here, as close to the source as possible. So any inbound traffic going into R1 here, that's what this is going to be doing. It's going to filter out our FTP and Telnet traffic going there and it's going to stop it. Once again, you can only apply it on devices you can control. So this is probably controlled by your ISP. You can't necessarily put an access control list on a router's ISP. You can't put it on company B's address. So your only choice is on A, where do we place it? As close to the source as possible. It was my pleasure to provide you with this wonderful episode on implementing access control lists. If you like this episode and you got value out of it, and of course, depending upon the platform you're using, please click that like button, give a five-star rating, leave a comment. This all helps me bring you more great content. Please take a minute to subscribe to my channel. All of my socials and contact information are on my website, kevtechify.com. You can get all these episodes in video and podcast form. In the upper right is my playlist for my series on network security. In the bottom right is one of my favorite videos that I picked just for you. 
Thank you so much for watching this episode of my series on network security. Once again, I'm Kevin. This is Kev Techify. I'll see you next time for another great adventure.